Hi everybody, I am Beth Williams with Chicks with Tools and we are the educational branch of Kareth House. When I say we, I mean me. <laughs> so anyway, um, I posted a picture of a wreath I had done on Facebook and one of my friends asked about doing a workshop and just in case the workshop doesn't actually happen, I thought I would do a tutorial. So the first thing you need is to have a wreath base and I am planning on doing this from all stuff that I have in the house. And this particular wreath is for my son's door. Not that every door needs one, but he saw that his sister had one, so he said he needed one too. So I am using ribbon I already have and a wreath base that I just took apart. It was a wreath we weren't using anymore, but it's not all falling apart yet. And I was able to take it apart because this is my first tip. I don't use hot glue if I can help it. Um, certain times, you know, if you know that you're gonna have that particular wreath for a super long time, then, you know, go ahead and do it. But I like to kind of rejig things. Uh, I kind of learned that from my mother-in-law who's always taking things apart and putting them back together. And so I don't wanna use hot glue because that means I can't use the base anymore. So um, anyway, I pulled all the old sparkly bits out and I went through my son's toys and I found a bunch of um, like matchbox type vehicles and he's 16, he doesn't really need these. So yes, it is a bit of a juvenile wreath, but you know, it'll work. I also am using ribbon that um, is the same that's on his Christmas tree. Yes, we he has his own Christmas tree. And in fact, we have about 19 Christmas trees in our house. We go really over the top with Christmas decorations. And um, I'm also using some blue and I have some red beads that I'm gonna add in there. It's Christmas, plus he loves red. And this ribbon was already in there, which I, um, so I thought decided just to keep that um, because it's kind of goes with a sort of a car theme. You know, it looks a little bit like the checkered flag from a race. Um, and you notice I'm using three different kinds of ribbon. That's by no means a necessity, but I think it helps to tie things in together. And, um, so that's why I'm doing that. So the first thing I'm going to do is to attach the, um, the beading in here. And mind you, I, I do experiment. So I might be taking things apart and putting them back together and, and all that sort of thing. Um, but I'm also using, um, you need to know, if I don't use hot glue, I use wire. And this is floral wire, little story here. Um, when I was getting married back in 1999, um, my mom and I were doing a lot of the floral arrangements and um, we were using um, silks in, in places where it wasn't going to be as noticeable. You know, if it was up close, we were gonna use fresh. Um, so uh, anyway, I bought a box of floral wire and I was going to buy two boxes and the, floor, the florist said, you will, never, you will never ever use all of this wire. And sure enough, um, here we are 21 years later, and I am just now getting to the bottom of it, and I use this stuff a lot. So if you read my blogs, you've probably heard that story before. But um, so anyway, floral wire, very handy. Also have um, a set of wire cutters to, because you don't need the floral wire in the, in the full length. And then um, have a good pair of scissors. I actually write fabric only on them so that my family won't use them for other things. And, um, and then that's it. So um, first things first, I'm going to take the, the um, beading and I'm just gonna work it around in here and hook it on where I want to. And also take advantage of the wreath itself. I hook things in all the time, just bending, this, um, bending these little branches around and that works beautifully. All right, here's a little tip. When you're using um, anything that you have a limited amount, so this is the length that I have of these beads, and I can do it two ways. I can either just wrap it around this way, already having it doubled up, which is totally fine, or if I wanted to, I could zigzag it through um, you just want to be sure that you have it evenly dispersed. So kind of figure out how you want to lay it and um, so that you don't, you don't end up with a whole bunch over here and then you ran out over here. So you just need to, um, to plan just a little bit with that. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is add some ribbon 
And because my son is a boy, um, obviously, um, I want to make it not so precious. And so instead of using a bunch of loops, which is totally fine, and I've got that on plenty of things, I'm going to I've just cut a bunch of lengths of ribbon, um, cut them all at an angle, and I'm just going to space them around and hook them into um, the wire that, um, the wire frame that's holding this together and get them so they're kind of poking up like that. And um, just be sure you cut them long enough that they're not hiding down inside the greenery. And then this, these are serving um, dual purpose because I'm actually tying the um, red beads into place in some instances, not every instance. And um, so this just adds a little bit of sparkle. Yes, even though he's a boy, it is Christmas, which in most cases means there's glitter. And by the way, just a little plug on um, one of the uh, pieces of, um, one of the items that we carry in our store, Carith House Home, it's called a table crummer. And at Christmas time, you know, usually I've got something involving a lot of glitter on the table. Um, and so, and, and I don't change out the tablecloth all season long if I can help it because that means, you know, rearranging everything. So I just use placemats and keep the crumbs off of it. Well, glitter is an issue. And so this table crummer is is the best thing because it um you know how glitter just sticks to tablecloth this crummer will just scoot it right off the table with absolutely n almost no effort and um so i highly recommend it and um it's less than five dollars so it's like a really great stocking stuffer kind of idea and um very upscale it's what the waiters use in fine dining restaurants um anyway just a little advertisement there. Um, okay, so this is pretty, pretty good. I um, think I'm gonna just move a couple here and get them more evenly spaced. Again, um, it would have been a little bit better if I would have just laid these out first and decided exactly where I wanted them before I just started willy-nilly tying them in there. Um, okay, and again, I can always add more. So trying, I'm debating whether I should go on ahead and put on the cars or if I should go on ahead and do the loops um, or go on ahead and do the other ribbon. And I think I've decided I'm gonna do the other ribbon next. So um, I'll check back in with you after I do this exact same process using this sort of Star Wars-y kind of ribbon. So here's the wreath after putting in the two different kinds of ribbon plus the beads, plus keep in mind I already had these um, little loops of ribbon. And to tell you the truth, I quite like it the way it is. So, um, but I did promise you that I would put these cars on it. So um, we'll give it a shot with the, all the cars and see how it goes. So this is going to take it from like normal festive Christmas to, um, to little kid. And um, so what I'm gonna do first um, is take the different colors that I've got represented here and um, and I want to kind of organize them that way so you know if I've got orange I don't think that's supposed to be orange but it's reading as orange um, so I'm going to make um, five spots because you do things in odds and I'm just going to lump together the different cars and things. And I'm also going to pay attention to sizes because there's a different uh, different kinds of sizes I've got here. So um, I am going to now take the red, I had orange before. So throw in some red and let's see what I've got now. I do have some black. Oh, I got more red. So let's keep on with the red theme, which is great. You know, it is Christmas. Not that fire trucks really represent that unless you burn the turkey. <laughs> of course.
course, or the Christmas tree, God forbid. So, um, okay. Now I've got some police cars. And this is, all I'm doing is just planning right now. I just don't want to get to the end and realize that I had it kind of goofy. And I don't have to use everything that I brought down. So I have a, oops, I have a semi here as well. Um, I'm from the north. We call them semis up north down here. In Georgia, I think everybody calls them a tractor trailer. Um, and I'm not really sure if that guy is going to fit on there. Okay. So you can either put them together sort of in a lump or you can um, wire them all kind of along the way. And I think I'm going to do that, just sort of spread them out um, between everything. And But I'm gonna keep, going to keep this one, see it's got the big truck in it, I'm going to keep that as um, sort of a focal point. So um, I might add some other things that are, are large over there too. And also I'm going to put a big bow right here and so that will all play into it. Okay, here we are after attaching almost all of the cars. And I say almost because I want to do the area where the bow is going to be and then um, decide how I'm going to arrange any cars on top of that because the bow will cover up anything. And I might, not, I might decide not to put any cars on there at all. So when I wired the cars on, sometimes I managed to get it through the axles. Sometimes there were windows that I could put the wires through. Sometimes um, I had to just put it right on top because there was no other way to do it. But um, I always like to hold up my wreath to be sure nothing is shifting or shaking off and also having in mind where the bottom of your wreath is um, a good idea as well. So the next thing I'm going to do is show you how to make a bow. Now, when I was in high school, my first part-time job was working at Christmas at a florist. And, um, you know, they didn't trust me with most things, but I learned how to make bows and I had to make like 50 bows and um, for the holiday glow bouquets by FTD. So um, the normal bows that they put on those arrangements takes four yards of ribbon. And so what you do first, I don't have quite four yards here. I maybe have two, so mine won't be as big and I won't have all the long tags on it. But um, what you do first, I aim away from myself and I squish it. And we're first making the first center loop. And then you, you fold it back toward yourself and you pinch. This is all about pinch, twist, repeat. So you pinch it, you hold it together. I'm hopelessly right-handed, so I'm holding it in my left hand. Then I'm going to twist it so that the good side is facing up. Then I'm going, now we're going to do the actual loops. And I'm going to squeeze it again. So by the end, you're gonna have a, you know, quite a few um, wads of fabric in your hand. So then I twist it again. So I see the pretty side, make a loop the same size, and I'm going to repeat. Um, normally, I, if I remember right, at the florist, they would do about eight loops. Um, and I'm gonna have enough to do that. So I'm just doing exactly the same thing. I'm turning it so the right side is out, pinching it, twisting it, and the twisting hard is partly what gives it, give, gives it its volume. Okay, I'm actually gonna stop at six so that I have a tag. So I'm going to cut it off here, and then this will be the tag that goes on the back, okay? And you can make these as big as you want. And the great thing now is that back in, when I was in high school doing this job, we didn't have wired ribbon that I recall. And so now wired ribbon is awesome. And you should never have to pay for a, a ribbon again. Um, so then you just fluff the loops out like this. And that's it. And if you screw up, just undo the wire and try again. And um, so now, mystery solved, now you know how to make a bow. Now, the one I'm going to do for this, I'm going to do exactly the same process, except I'm going to incorporate all of the ribbons 
that were that I've already used on here. So I've got this um, diamond shape, my I call it my Star Wars ribbon, and then um, the blue. And I'll do it exactly the same way, but I'm gonna so I squish, and this is gonna really be a handful. And I don't know how many loops I actually need to make because I'm since I have three different ribbons, I'm actually doing three loops at a time. So I'm I think I'm just going to do one set and squeeze and twist. Oh my goodness, I just realized that one of them is going the wrong direction. It's only going on the wrong direction right here. Not too late to fix. Okay. And then we repeat. So I'm going to stop right there. And then I'm going to cut off my excess. I can neaten it up after I get it sort of managed. And if you don't feel like you can put the tag on just at this moment, then just go on ahead and twist the wire around and you can add your add your little tails in there. So I'm going to, I'm not gonna make super long tails. This is a wreath that's going on his bedroom door. Um, not that that really makes any difference, but you know, for a bow on a Christmas tree, you wanna have real long tags um, I'm all about the bows on the Christmas tree, but I'm not for my mama. It's always great when we would decorate the tree, you know, with all the sentimental ornaments, and then mama would come in with all of the finishing touches and put the big giant bow on top of the tree and, and just make it special. And she always made it pretty. And she always wanted to have a designer tree, even though we thought her trees were fabulous, but, um, Anyway, she, we, all of my trees involve something, involves a lot of sentimental as well as the designer touches. And because we have so many trees, um, we can find a place for any kind of ornament. And, you know, if you know me personally and you're thinking of, like, if you ever want to buy me a present, I will always take a Christmas ornament. Um, okay, so... We need to find the bottom again. And so we'll just wire this on like we wire on anything else. And actually, uh, it remains to be seen whether I want to put the truck on. So I will do this and then be right back. Well, here it is, the finished product for my son's room. And as you can see, it's got some glitter for mama. It's got the cars for him. And it all ties together in a boyish but yet festive kind of way. And I hope you learned a lot doing this and that you're willing to take it on for yourself. Um, and remember, you can do use anything to make a wreath. And um, use what you have, start with what you have in the house first, and, um, and then go from there. And if you have any questions or are looking for some ideas, you can reach out to me. Um, either through our Facebook Chicks with Tools or Instagram, although I'm not th that good at the, in the messages on Instagram, I, I will fully admit, and um, Beth at carethhouse.com. And you can also just go straight to our website. And if you want some more Christmas decorating ideas, more will be coming. And um, you can also look back and see some of the things we've done in the past. So, anyway, I hope to see you again, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.